have you ever want to just lay out all the information of the Greek, Roman, Rick Riordan books, characters, demigods, and the important people? Well, you're it's your lucky day as always, because Bookwester is about to do just that. Hello for Bookwesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookwester. Today, I'm going to introduce you basically to every single major character in the continuing Rick Riordan series except the King Chronicles and the Magnus Shade, which I will do in part 2. Well, let's get right off. So guys, let's continue on. Rick Riordan book characters, or more specifically, the Greek and Roman demigods. Let's get right on to it. Percy Jackson is the first character who made a big impression on his fellow modern demigods and introduced us to the concept of demigods and these heroes that are still modern, love electronics, but is still in a hero with swords and monsters. And he is introduced in Rick Riordan's first book, The Lightning Thief. He is the son of Poseidon and so has the ability to control water and breathe in it and sometimes do incredible heroic feats. And is, he is sarcastic and humorous and the narrator of the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series and also in some parts of the Heroes of Olympus series. And he's basically my favorite character, and his preferred weapon is Riptide's magical sword. He, it looks like a regular ballpoint pen, pen, but when removing the cap, it turns into a sword. And the cool thing is, he can't lose it. It always returns to Percy's pocket, no matter where it end, ends up. He is the main character in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, and the Heroes of Olympus series. He later returns in the trials of Apollo, the Hidden Oracle, and Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, the Ship of the Dead. Let's continue on to our dear planner, Annabeth Chase. She is the girlfriend of Percy Jackson. She is the daughter of Thana, and she man maintains a cold and not necessarily the most friendly demeanor at first but starts dating Percy at the end of the Percy Jackson and the Olympians series. She is extremely good at planning and, is always proved, and it is always proved throughout the series and books that her greatest weapon is her tricks, her words, and her intelligence. And she is the main character, one of the main characters, in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series and the Heroes of Olympus series and she is the part of both of the second and first great prophecies. And she later appears in the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, the Sword of the Summer, and the Ship of the Dead, like Percy Jackson. And her weapon, preferred weapon, is a celestial bronze dagger that was given to her by Luke. She sometimes, she also has a cap that can turn her invisible, and she sometimes uses an ivory sword that was built, made for her by Demanson, who was the giant of peace and one of the most peaceful giants. Let's continue on. That's the Magnus Chase and the Gods of That Sword, the Sword of Summer. Jason Grace. You expected this dude, didn't you? He is the main character in the Heroes of Olympus series. He is boyfriend of Piper McLean, and he is the son of Jupiter, the, no the Roman version of Zeus, the Lord of the Skis. His powers are he can fly, summon lightning, although sometimes and he can summon storms. In the Heroes of Olympus, the lost hero, he uses a coin that changes either a, into a gladius or a lance, depending on which side it lands on. The weapon was destroyed in the battle, however, and Jason gets a new golden gladius, which he uses for the rest of his life. And he always seems to have a slight friction, slight tussle with Percy Jackson for leadership, but he also seems to have a very similar personality with Percy Jackson. Friends first, myself next. 
and he really enters the world of Percy Jackson in The Trials of Apollo, The Burning Maze, where he meets his honorable death against Caligula. Spoiler alert, sorry sorry. Piper McLean, main character in the Heroes of Olympus series. She is Jason's girlfriend, and she is the daughter of Aphrodite, the, the goddess of beauty and love. And her power is to charm speak, the ability to, co the ability to convince and charm entities into doing her bidding for a short time, and it sometimes even work on minor monsters, entities, and gods. And she is one of the demigods of the Prophecy of Seven, as most of the characters' demigods in this little list is in. And she uses a dagger called Catatropus. It means looking glass. And it was used by Helen of Troy as a way to get magical visions of the outside, which probably would have driven her mad, as Piper McLean sometimes said in the series. And she later even uses the Boreid Icicle Sword for only a short time, but she did her damage with it, so. And she reappears in the trials of Apollo, the Burning Maze even wielding a Cherokee dart blower as a weapon as, with her heritage alongside her. That's the Trials of Apollo the Burning Maze. Let's get right on to it. Frank Zhang. He is the main character of the Heroes of Olympus series. He is Hazel's boyfriend. And he is the son of Mars, the Roman version of Ares, the god of war. His pirate's excellent battle technician, but that's not all. And he can shape shift into other entities such as animals, monsters, and so on. His preferred weapon is a bow and arrow, as you can see in this fan fiction. And I think it's excellent. That's exactly how Frank Zhang looks like. If I thought this is from um, Rick Riordan Fandom, check it out. And well, they have great fanfic. And he becomes the predator, predator of New Rome at the end of the series of the Heroes of Olympus. And he reappears in the Trials of Apollo in the Tyrant's Tomb, where he plays a major role. His life is tied to a small piece of wood, and he kills Caligula with his own lifeline, that piece of wood. And avenging Jason, and he somehow survives by choosing his own destiny. If we go on, that's the Tyrant's Tomb. Hazel Levisk, main character of the Heroes of Olympus series. She is the girlfriend of Frank Zhang. She is the daughter of Pluto, the Roman version of Hades, the god of death and the lord of the underworld. But Pluto, kind of different to Hades, represents more wealth of the ground than death and, you know, the scary stuff. Her preferred weapon is a cavalry sword, and she has the power to ability to summon the riches of the ground, jewels, gold, and silver, which is very useful when, you know, pelting giants with huge suppliers. It works pretty well, actually. Note, if the materials that she pulls out of the ground, maybe jewels, gold, silver, treasure, who knows? The person who buys it and sells it will be cursed and will soon die. And she rides Ar Arion, or Arion, or I don't, I don't really know how to pronounce that, sorry. And it's the fastest horse in Greek mythology. That is so cool. And she reappears in the Trials of Apollo, the Tyrant's Tomb, and she becomes Predator in the book. As we go on to Leo Valdez, the last of the Prophecy of Seven. He is the main character of the Heroes of Olympus series. He is the son of Hepatus, the god of the blacksmiths. His power is that he is immune to fire and can throw cones of fire himself and at his enemies. And his, his magical item weapon basically is a belt that can summon most things you can find in a machine shop like hammers, screwdrivers, chainsaws from time to time. And he is always humorous and always tries to make the situation better at green, grim times, like there's a huge giant that's gonna kill them and so on. And he later falls in love with Calypso, a minor titan, I think she's the daughter of Atlas, who had done nothing wrong but was captured on an island called Ogigia. And she returns to the Trials of Apollo series and plays major roles up until book 3. And if we go on to Reyna, not one of the pro for Prophecy 7, but 
She plays major roles in the Heroes of Olympus series and the Trials of Apollo, the Tyrant's Tomb. Her power is the ability to lend one person strength by taking power from other demigods, which is very useful in battle, for she is the Praetor of Rome, who is the one who leads the soldiers. She is the daughter of Bellona, the Roman goddess of war, and she becomes a heart hunter of Artemis at the end of the Trials of Apollo, the Tyrant's Tomb. She is always very strict in rules and always does what is right, even in hard situations, as it is shown in the Heroes of Olympus series, the last book. Meg McCaffrey. Um, I didn't include Apollo because he technically isn't a demigod, he's a god, you know what I mean? So I didn't include him, but I included his fellow demigod companion, Meg McCaffrey. She is the main character in the Trials of Apollo series, and she is the daughter of Demeter. And her powers are the ability to make plants grow several hundred times faster in speed, and the ability to tra- teleport through plants. She is the master of Apollo, but Apollo can't really do anything, so it doesn't really help. And she seems to think Apollo as a friend as the series wears on. That was it, guys. That was all the demigods. Well, the major ones at the very least. In the series' upcoming, the Percy Jackson of the and, Oli- and and the Olympians, the heroes of Olympus, and finally the trials of Apollo. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. And like always, bookquester and the bookquester. Well, definitely, Rick Riordan books are the best of them all.